How are you finding life in the bubble so far? Um, well, it's it's a little strange being at a at a at a nice resort like this, but um, unfortunately, due to my circumstances, I'm used to being isolated. If you all know my history, so I it's it's nothing. Of course, of course, and and just like you know, moving to the fight sort of immediately. Um, Philip is obviously a sort of a, a highly talented prospect, and yeah. What is what? What do you sort of know about about the man you're going to face on Saturday night? Well, um, I was fortunate enough to be Felix head head sparring partner down in camp um, last year in Miami, so I'm I'm familiar with his style, and um, it's nothing that I'm not used to. I've been around boxing for 32 years, so I can make adjustments that I needed. Um, he he. He, he pretty much a typical European style fighter, you know, depends on one punch, but, um, you know, heavy legs where it's hard for him to move and angles and different circles and everything. But, you know, I got, I got my work cut out ahead of me because he kind of know me and know the things that I like to do. So I'm, I'm quite sure they making adjustments. Absolutely. Um, I've got, we've got a question from Ames. So uh, please go ahead, Ames. Hi, Radar. How are you doing? Hello. Pleasure to meet you, Radar. Uh, Ames here boxing news tv before we get to the fight with philip hergovich uh, i've noticed some names on your record some very interesting names can you take me back to fighting james tony the lead with the fight and that experience um wow that was that was an amazing fight you know i, I actually learned a lot from james um actually seeing him around in, a, in the detroit gyms at galaxy but um you know that fight would have been a different situation if i didn't have so much on my plate you know, I, I don't know if you guys really know my story that I went to prison. So I was out on a bond when I fought James Tony, And um, it was kind of hard to stay focused because when I was out in camp, you know, they found out I was out of state and they told me they had snatched my bond, get home. And, you know, I couldn't really train 100%. But I actually learned a lot from James in that fight. James is one of the older, well, was one of the older heavyweights from the old era. Talk to me about some of the two other uh, older heavyweights who are going to be fighting very soon, Tyson Roy Jones Jr. What's your opinion on that fight? Or um, I, think, sorry. I think it's a good fight for what they're doing. You know, um, you know, age is not really a big issue as long as a person take care of their body and keep their health and everything because I'm considered an older fighter now and um, I had a 12-year layoff. But I actually liked that fight. I was actually having a chance to go be a sparring partner with Mike Tyson in that camp. But I got this call, and so I had to focus on myself. But um, I think it's going to be a very interesting fight. Mike Tyson still has power. Ray Jones has speed and his ability to um, catch you off guard and off surprise. And everybody understands no boxing that speed is power, especially when you're getting hit with shots that you don't see coming. And the one more fight I want to talk about before we get to your one, it's uh, Kubrat Pulev. Take me back to that fight and the experiences you got from fighting Pulev. Um, you know, well, once again, I, I took the fight on a three-week notice. You know, I, um, not to make everything about money, I was kind of in dire need for the finances, but it was a good experience. Um, I know I could have done way better if I would have prepared myself much better. And, you know, it's, it's no excuse. You're supposed to always be in shape waiting on a call. But um, it was a good experience, you know, fighting Kulev. I know he got his hands full with um, Anthony Joshua coming up. You know, I was fortunate enough to be in camp with Anthony Joshua before. So it's going to be a very intriguing fight. What do you think of that fight with Kulev and Joshua? Um, I think Joshua's, I think Joshua's going to beat him. And let's bring this fight, uh, bring, bring this to you now. Obviously, you're in against Philip Hergovich. You talked uh, just moments earlier about what you've seen of Philip. Uh, generally... Um, people seem to think that, if I'm honest, I'm, I'm sure you know this as well, Philip will probably win or beat you. But what do you think will happen in that fight? Um, well, you know, I, I understand that they're expecting me to come in this fight not in shape, mm -hmm. but I'm well prepared. Um, you know, I had an amazing camp. You know, I switched some things up that I was doing wrong and everything. So I expect it to be a it's, – it's going to be a good outcome, you know. I'm going in to fight to get the win, but I understand how it is on the business side, coming on the B side, but it's not something that he's just going to come in and, and feel like he can do what he want to do to get the victory. That's definitely not the case. How difficult has it been training for this fight? What with the coronavirus? Um, it's it been kind of difficult, but, you know, like Michigan was one of the last spots to um, open up the gyms and everything. So 
I was out in Vegas training for a while because my coach, she also trained UFC fighters. So I was out there training for a while. And I came home and um, we found a gym that pretty much let us get access to train. And um, it was, it was, it was, it was cool, you know, nice camp. It was kind of hard getting, getting good quality sparring, but we made the best out of it every situation we had, you know, I went up to Saginaw, boxed Jermaine Franklin, you know, I got a lot of rounds in with a guy that I fought on Showtime and, um, you know, so I'm well prepared. My final question for you is like, like I mentioned about the consensus coming into this fight with Philip, but if you win, which isn't at the realms of the possibilities, what do you want? Um, I just want to be able to have an opportunity for, for bigger fights, you know, keep my name going because I, I know I have all the talent in the world to be with any one of these elite heavyweights. And, um, you know, it's kind of hard because I don't have a, a big promoter behind me. So I pretty much take what I can get. But after this um, display of my skills and my talents that I'm put on Saturday night, I know for a fact that I should get some good phone calls. I wish you all the best, Rado. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks, Ames. Uh, call us next, please. Hi, Rodell. Uh, thank you so much for taking time to talk to us. Really appreciate it. You know, but by the time you step into the ring against Philip Hergovich, it'll be almost exactly one full calendar year since your last fight. At this stage of your career, it has it the, the, the long break kind of help you a little bit, just kind of dissect everything, especially coming out of the loss to Kurat Pulev. Has that, uh, do you feel like the break has kind of helped you or, or hurt you in, in that regard? Um, well, it's it's kind of hard to say. I mean, I understand, like, sparring, you know, getting a lot of rounds in in the ring is a totally different atmosphere from being in a fight. But, like I said, I was fortunate enough to get a lot of rounds in, and um, I don't think the layoff is really going to be that much of a big deal deal with me. Um, so I'll be well prepared. I'm well prepared. You kind of mentioned, you know, obviously you're not behind, like, a, a big, big promoter, and you said you won – bigger fight the opportunity to have bigger fights does it feel like every fight now there's a little bit more pressure to deliver and perform in the hopes that you get those big fights i know you've had a couple of, of good fights you got pulev you got jermaine franklin's a very good heavyweight prospect uh before pulev does it feel like there's a little more pressure now to deliver in the hopes of getting those big fights um yes yeah, sometimes because it's like i say being on the b side or actually a little less than a beast that it's like you just wait on a call. And this actually the first fight that I got um, offered where I had actual time to prepare for it. You know, I have a proper camp and um, the people behind me to support me for the financial means to bring in sparring and do everything that I need to prepare for a fight. So, um, you know, I, I definitely will perform and I know for a fact that I will get calls after this if, you know, I'm not like being too cocky or modest about it, but I just know my talent. I know my skills and I'm definitely in shape. So, you know. What is it about Hergovich? I know you've talked a little bit about his style, what you saw of him, but what about Philip? Uh, you know, compared to some of the guys that you've met, uh, you've fought since your return, that kind of leads you to believe that you're going to perform better and even come out with a win. Um, well, it's, it's because Phillips, his, his style, like he depend on one punch. He depend on the right hand. Um, he paw with the jab. He, he's not like he's, he's bottom heavy, meaning that he's not a person that can move around, um, quick on his feet. I expect him to throw, come through a lot of punches, you know, um, cause that's what he was doing in camp, but he just target for one shot. It's not like he set everything up and look for it. He, he just looked for his big right hand. And that's something that I'm, I'm expecting and I'm going to be at the counter and make adjustments to. Appreciate it, Rydell, and best of luck against Philip. Looking forward to seeing you in the ring. Thank you very much. Sorry, guys. Al Jones, please. Right there, how you doing in the ring with Al Jones, Cleveland, Ohio? How's it going, man? I'm all right. How you doing? Good, good. So coming up in the, coming up in the, in in the streets of Detroit, I know you've had your challenges. You faced your challenges, you know, and you've overcame those, which is good. I commend you for that. What have you done now to prepare yourself mentally and physically and spiritually to go in and get a victory this weekend? Um, you know, like I said, I actually um had an amazing camp. I changed a lot of things that I was doing outside the ring, you know, with my family, the homebody, the um 
trying to be a parent as far as when I'm training for the fight. So the wife, everybody took a lot of pressure off me from having to go home, play Mr. Mom's, picking the kids up from school, cooking. You know, I, I, I hired a, a different trainer, somebody that pushed me and get on my ass and don't let me take no for an answer. If they tell me I'm doing 10 rounds today, you know, it's more likely 12 or 13, not me saying, okay, after the seventh round, I'm, I'm done. So I made a, 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 a big commitment to myself as far as getting in, in great shape. Okay, good, good. And what can we what can we expect to see out of you this weekend? What what um, type of style? What type of fighter? What what you bring into the ring this weekend? I mean, you know, I, you seen my fights. You know, I'm a crafty fighter. You know, what I'm saying, I, I, of course, I expect to bring the slickness. But um, what a lot of people don't expect me to do is sit down more on my punches. You know, what I'm saying to go for the harder shots. You know, because my counter punching ability is definitely there. They haven't left me so. Um, you can expect me to sit down on my punches and grunt, grunt some, grind some, um, some bigger shots out instead of just using my boxing ability. Okay. Thank you so much for taking my questions, and I wish you all the luck this weekend, brother. Thank you very much. Right. right. Hey, right, Dale. I just had uh, one more question for you. I forgot to ask you. Um, I just wanted to know where you stand on the side of well, Deontay Wilder putting out his message recently out on Instagram. He came out from a. Uh, from the silence he put out that message, have you seen it? And where do you stand on this whole situation? Um, I'm I'm really not too sure exactly what message you're talking about with Deontay Wilder, but um, me and him we talk every now and then through our mutual friend Malik Scott, you know, and he, they ask me for my opinions with certain stuff or what he's doing, but I actually don't even know what what remark he made or what comment you were talking about right now. Uh, do you mind if I tell you? Is that right? Okay, I, I, it's cool. Sure. So it's about the, the, the glove situation in which John Taylor Wilder and, and others have been have, have said about the fight and apparently there's allegations of uh, the glove tampering. Would you care to comment about that? Um, it's hard for me to comment because I don't know, but I have seen like images and everything and, um, you know, certain stuff don't look right. But like I said, I can't comment on it. I wasn't there. And um, I'm not big in a lot of conspiracy theories, but it, it doesn't look right. Their left hand glove doesn't look right with Tyson Fury. I mean, there are some people that say and question Deontay Wilder's mindset right now. Would you have that worry about Deontay Wilder now? If he's coming to fight again next, would you worry about where he is kind of mentally? Um, yes, because like just being a fighter, you know, losing a fight, you question a lot of stuff about yourself. But, you know, I haven't lost to that type of form with Deontay Wilder lost where I got stopped, whether it was the amateurs or the pros. But so I'm quite sure a devastating loss, especially when you on a high horse, when you the alpha male of the sport, I know, I know it can bother you. So um, I think he's strong enough mentally to overcome it. But it's, it's some stuff that I feel personally Deontay Wilder should work on. And, um, you know, just make sure you go in with a clear head. You know, as a person, I like him. I've been in his camp. We talk, we laugh, we play, and um, you know it's it's kind of hard to bounce back from that when you like you like I say you you're the alpha male, you're the top of the sport. Thanks again, Rondell. Thank you. Hey, what's up, Rondell? How you doing, man? It's Eric. We are from ESPN. What's up, Eric? How you doing? I know you're from the D, man. I'm from Flint, Michigan. So you you talked about <laughs> training in Saginaw. So just kind of talk about you know I know the toughness of this area and the toughness of the state. How does that how does that shape your mindset of how you enter the ring and just your whole style? You spoke about that before, but just that area growing up and that that culture and, and training in that culture as well. Well, just just being from that area, you know, the glove, the mitten, the dirty mitten, um, you had a mentality that that nobody can beat you. You know what I'm saying? And and I feel like I feel like that myself. Um, like I say, a couple fights that I lost since returning back to society, you know, I beat myself because I wasn't prepared. And it was the point of um you know, I'm hearing the I'm hearing the numbers. I'm like, okay, I can make this money so I can feed my family. I don't have to take the chances that I took to send me away. So, but this time I just buckled down. It's like, you know, I, I know these guys can't beat me. I beat myself by not being in shape, and I'm tired of just letting somebody put my name on their resume. <laughs>